Röntgen's Ray by Elizabeth Cole. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Röntgen's Ray, a story of the discovery of a light that was never on land or sea, by Elizabeth Cole. The transparent man at the Century of Progress Fair in Chicago startingly revealed the various organs, bones, and joints of the human body to all who were fortunate enough to view this skillfully contrived invention. Three years later, at the Hall of Science in Rockefeller Center, New York, the woman of glass, with its electrically lighted organs, circulatory and nervous systems, contributed still further to our knowledge of the magic way in which nature has put together her human beings what a boon these inventions are for doctors in explaining to patients how they have been guided in making their diagnosis each year the public becomes more and more intelligent in the hows and whys of sickness and the doctor's diagnosis and treatment are no longer veiled in mystery the man who was greatly responsible for this forward step in science was wilhelm conrad röntgen he discovered the x-ray in 1895 if we today are fascinated over the marvel of seeing through ourselves it is easily imagined how röntgen's discovery must have startled the world in the nineties at the time röntgen was fifty years of age he was a professor of physics and mathematics who had been graduated with a degree of doctor of philosophy keenly interested in radiation he had been working on this fascinating study for years he was not seeking to find a cure for disease however nor was he a physician like robert koch he was seeking to find invisible light in his laboratory and through his discovery of the x-ray he gave to the world of medicine and surgery a new method of examination that has made early and exact diagnosis possible in many insidious diseases such as tuberculosis he has saved thousands of human lives although born in lenep a little town in eastern prussia on march twenty seventh eighteen forty five wilhelm and his parents soon moved to holland his mother's country his boyhood and early school days were not unusual in a special way in fact he was not a very good nor interested student then he entered the polytechnic school at zurich in switzerland where he had a most inspiring teacher of physics rudolf clausius his interest in science was awakened and he became an exact and enthusiastic pupil so outstanding was his ability that following his graduation at the university of zurich he was appointed assistant to august kunt a great teacher there in experimental physics whom he had studied under and greatly admired with him he went in eighteen seventy to würzburg and later to strasburg here he was married in eighteen seventy two to bertha ludwig a swiss who had remarkable sympathy and understanding for his work in eighteen eighty eight at the age of forty three röntgen was appointed professor of mathematics and physics at würzburg the second most important university in bavaria and it was there that he made his world startling discovery during these years he was a popular and stimulating teacher to those pupils who were interested in his subjects but boring to those who did not care for mathematics or physics his reticence and modesty kept him from caring for promotions and his name was little known outside the university the bomb of his discovery therefore came with even greater force and at first people thought he had chanced upon a miracle for many years he had been interested in invisible energy and had carried on concentrated research in radiation in his laboratory on november eighth eighteen ninety five the final result of his work was revealed to him in his laboratory he had connected an induction coil to a crook's tube this was a vacuum tube that had been invented by sir william crooks of london in the seventies it threw out light and glowed with a phosphorescence when electricity was passed between two electrodes inside the tube 
to eliminate any visible rays Röntgen entirely covered the tube with black paper and excluded every bit of light from the room then he placed on the table opposite the tube a screen covered with a chemical preparation which gave a fluorescent glow no visible light of any kind could get out of the tube nor penetrate it because of the darkness in the room he knew that there could be no radiation outside of the tube yet something did come from that tube and fell on the screen as a greenish glow it was his invisible ray he found that these rays would penetrate cardboard wool cloth even a thick book but they would not go through copper iron and other metals so well then he found they would penetrate flesh but that the bones were opaque he photographed what he saw and could scarcely believe his eyes for weeks he had been laboring over these experiments but the day he saw this light that was never on land or sea his wife bertha as she wrote to a cousin in america was very angry with him for not praising a good dinner she had prepared she had finally enticed him to come to eat but he had hurried through the meal and then to appease her impatience with him he took her to the darkened room where he showed her the wonders he photographed her hand with the new ray her bones and the ring showed but no skin appeared it was a skeleton hand she was as excited as he and admitted that he had made a discovery well worth the sacrifice of her good dinner he submitted his discovery to one test after another watching in his laboratory night and day to see any new developments but every experiment he made proved that his apparatus was foolproof several weeks passed before he told others even his laboratory assistants anything about his invisible rays a preliminary communication was given december twenty eighth to the physical medical society of würzburg and it was published under the title on a new kind of ray in the annals of the society for eighteen ninety five then after the christmas holidays he spoke publicly before the society in würzburg on january twenty third eighteen ninety six the news of his discovery had got about and can you imagine the sensation it made among all groups of people the announcement that röntgen had seen the bones of a hand through the skin sounded absurd every seat in the vast auditorium was taken by the many persons who waited expectantly to hear his address on a new form of radiation professors high officials army men students doctors all were present and greeted röntgen with enthusiastic applause he told of his experiment and it sounded like magic to prove his rays he took a photograph of the hand of a famous anatomist in the audience his excellency von Kölliker, and it was he who proposed that the ray should be named for röntgen again great applause greeted the suggestion the aged von Kölliker said that never in his forty-eight years of membership in the society had he witnessed such an event röntgen hated publicity but he had to make the best of it every newspaper began to write about his all penetrating rays to a friend of his professor f exner of vienna he had loaned his first x-ray pictures and that is how the story got into the public press suppose you had lived then and had picked up your morning paper and read the noise of war's alarm the boer war was the biggest front page news in eighteen ninety five should not distract attention from the marvellous triumph of science which is reported from vienna it is announced that professor röntgen of würzburg university has discovered a light which for purposes of photography will penetrate wood cloth and other organic substances an interview he later gave to a reporter illustrates röntgen's own wonder at his discovery is it light he was asked no he replied for it can neither be reflected nor broken is it electricity not in any known form what is it then i know not concluded its modest discoverer hundreds of articles appeared in scientific journals during eighteen ninety six physicians saw the possibilities offered by the x-ray but the general public was not so eager to see through themselves 
cartoons were prolific and amusing on the revolting indecency of seeing people's bones we need not dwell said one article throw the thing into the sea where the fish may contemplate each other's bones but not for us in punch january twenty five eighteen ninety six a verse appeared two stanzas of which showed a general feeling that here was something to make fun of as well as to marvel at o röntgen then the news is true and not a trick or idle rumour that bids us each beware of you and of your grim and graveyard humour we do not want like dr swift to take our flesh off and to pose in our bones or show each little rift and joint for you to poke your nose in early in january eighteen ninety six Röntgen was summoned to berlin to demonstrate his discovery to the kaiser at the palace here he was awarded the crown order of the second class and given the title of excellence other honours came to him among which was the nobel prize in physics in nineteen o one and an m d honorary degree from the university of Würzburg he moved to munich in nineteen hundred to take charge of the institute of physics where his work was largely administrative and did not permit him to devote much time to scientific research Röntgen never spoke again before the public about his discovery but medical journals electrical and engineering journals and many others published articles on the wonderful possibilities offered to diagnosis through the discovery of the x-ray there were many stories given out about the way his discovery came to be made but dr otto glasser in an article in the american journal of Röntgenology and radiotherapy says that the most widely circulated account in our country was a myth this has been accepted and described by many but makes the discovery seem purely accidental the episode relates how Röntgen suddenly called from his laboratory left a glass bulb glowing with colored light on a book in which he had placed a large flat key as a bookmark it happened that under the book was a photographic plate holder when he returned he took up this plate holder with others and went to the country for a holiday outing he took several pictures and when all were developed he found one which he couldn't understand it showed the book and within its pages appeared the key as a shadow he puzzled over how this came to be and made all kinds of experiments finally he placed the bulb tube book key and plate as they had been before and found that by chance he had found his invisible light this story has never been accepted save in the united states and while its romantic angle appeals to the imagination it seems wholly inconsistent with the character of Röntgen and his habits of work and study his was a search for truth with no desire for material reward and as a zealous painstaking scientist he has had few equals the first tube to reach america went to johns hopkins university and the second was secured by amherst college the following story of the second tube is not a myth dr kendall emerson a student at amherst in eighteen ninety six and now managing director of the national tuberculosis association tells of having had his foot x-rayed he thought it was the most mysterious thing that had ever happened Quote, the professor put my foot on a little rest in front of the light he has said in describing the exciting event he gave me a box to look through with a fluorescent screen fastened on the front and sight for my eyes on the opposite side i looked and was tempted to leave the spot in a panic before my eyes was the outline of my shoe as a shadow on a brighter background and i could see right through the shoe and distinguish the nails in the shoe which showed black against the screen but far worse than that awaited for as my eyes grew accustomed to the dim and ghostly light the outlines of the bones of my forefoot and toes came sharply into view i knew they belonged to me for i wiggled them to find out and sure enough the ghostly bones began to wiggle too End quote. since Röntgen's first tubes other students of physics and electricity have added certain refinements and worked out better methods and techniques for using them 
the replacing of the photographic plate by a fluorescent screen which later became the edison fluoroscope was a most important step at first the x-ray was devoted chiefly to diagnosing fractures and diseases of the bone then physicians began to realize the marvelous possibilities offered in studying diseases of the organs as the x-ray machine became perfected it was used more and more in all branches of medicine especially has it been a help in diagnosing tuberculosis where it is so difficult to locate the damage in the lungs by means of sound and touch healthy lungs which are air-filled structures easily permit the rays to pass through but when the lungs are diseased with tuberculosis a dark shadow on the x-ray plate reveals where the disease is there are various tones of gray seen on the film and the expert can discern just how much tuberculosis is present through his ability to distinguish between these grayish tones today the x-ray is used in schools and clinics among children and tens of thousands of pictures of the chests of school children are taken annually in this country when tuberculosis is found early in life the child has all the chance in the world for recovery in the olden days the disease was seldom discovered until it was too late for the patient to get well not only that but the family and friends were daily being exposed to infection with early discovery public health is benefited boys and girls today do not become panicky when the x-ray machine is wheeled out nor is it a long nor troublesome ordeal for the x-rayer or the x-rayed there are now machines that take 150 x-ray pictures per hour and greatly simplify the cost of checking health among school children as well as industrial workers in large business concerns paper films are used for this rapid method and are more economical than the celluloid films they indicate the shadows as distinctly as is necessary although the equipment is still in experimental stages the future of the x-ray holds much promise each year sees some new step such as portable machines and these paper films so that x-raying has become a standardized method for diagnosis used by every tuberculosis specialist another and most important contribution of the x-ray to tuberculosis control is its use in following the progress of the disease or the effects of treatment artificial pneumothorax or collapse of the diseased lung is given to many tuberculosis patients to rest the lung the work of breathing may then be carried on by the good lung and the sick lung is allowed to rest follow-up x-rays are taken to see what has been accomplished through inserting the air many patients are now alive who without this procedure might have died in countless other fields the röntgen ray is serving mankind too flaws in iron and steel castings may be discovered thus industry is benefited in forestry the condition of trees may be determined through the x-ray in art it is used to detect fakes in paintings by the old masters in all foot troubles the bones of the feet may be studied to find out what type of shoe best suits the individual's needs for diagnosis of the conditions of the teeth the x-ray is a most necessary aid to dentists it is also used in the treatment of certain diseases Röntgen's great discovery is famous throughout the civilized world but the personality of the man himself was known to few retiring and simple in his manner and always modest over his contribution to science he never allowed himself to become a public figure his dutch mother had taught him orderliness and this was characteristic of every step in his research work it is interesting to note that in an address he made at the university of würzburg a year before his discovery he quoted the following sentence from a professor p a kirchner who had said it in 1602 quote, nature often reveals the most astonishing phenomena by the simplest means but these phenomena can only be recognized by those who have sharp judgment and the investigating spirit and who have learned to obtain information from experience the teacher of all things End quote. certainly röntgen was one of those who captured the phenomena of nature with his investigating spirit 
thorough exact and keen his work was always reliable and his information was gleaned step by step from the taskmaster experience Röntgen had few friends, but those who knew him held him in high esteem. During the World War he suffered greatly over the distress of his country, and permitted himself no luxuries, save his well-loved Dutch tobacco, which he used as sparingly as possible. The Röntgens never had any children, and when in 1919 his wife, Bertha, who had always been very dear to him, died, he felt that there was little in life to live for. On February 10, 1923, he died of cancer at the age of 78. End of Röntgen's Ray by Elizabeth Cole Read by Avaii in April 2011